please be sure to use support the creator code justical when buying things in the item shop. I will give a shout out to someone who can prove they bought something with it in my next video. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. What is up boys and girls, it's me Justical again and welcome back to a brand new video. Now I'm gonna keep it short and simple. After you have watched the whole video, click on the link in the top of the description and watch me play live in Kungarna's EU trials. I hope to see you there, enjoy the video. So since I switched to keyboard and mouse a little over 4 months ago, I have come a very long way. I went from being absolutely atrocious to being at an amazing skill level. There are a few things I learned along this difficult journey and I already told you all my general tips on how to get better at keyboard and mouse in an earlier video. I would highly recommend you check that one out if you're making the switch, the link will be in the description. Today however, we're going to be looking into this with a lot more detail. To be exact, we are going to look at the main points to getting more comfortable on keyboard and mouse fast. And with comfortable, I mean literally comfortable at using it. So we're going to be addressing something else than sensitivity and keybinds today. We are first going to talk about your setup. I see Loads of viewers coming into my DMs every day showing their setups in keyboards and mouses. The reoccurring things in these setups however is that most of the time they don't have a proper one. Now don't get me wrong, a proper setup doesn't mean a flashy $50,000 one you see all over YouTube, you can get one of those when you're rich. I'm talking about a simple desk to put your monitor, mouse pad and keyboard and mouse on. That is literally all you need. I see too many people using keyboard and mouses on a small coffee table or anything else that is placed lower than where a mouse and keyboard should be. A keyboard and mouse should be easily accessible for you without stretching your arms and should be at the right height. Now trust me, I get it. Some of you play keyboard and mouse on a PS4 or Xbox in the living room with a giant TV and use the coffee table as support for your keyboard and mouse. I had the same kind of setup back in the day and you can even get good on a weird setup like that, but that is not what you want. Not only will it take significantly longer for you to get better at the game as you're playing in poor conditions, it could also mess up your back with prolonged playtime as your posture is horrible while playing. So yes, if you want to get better and more comfortable at keyboard and mouse fast, buy a cheap desk and place your peripherals on there. I got mine at IKEA a few years ago and it definitely played a crucial role in getting me to the skill level I am today. It may sound simple but it is often overlooked. It doesn't matter how cheap the desk is, get it, as long as it is better than a coffee table. Now that you have your desk, we are going to look at something that you will put on the desk, a good mouse pad. Now there are a lot of mouse pads out there, from normal ones to XXL ones. Which one you buy should be up to you and your personal preference. Just make sure to have the following tips in mind when buying one. First of all, before we go into all of that, keep your mouse pad clean. There is nothing worse than feeling crumbs under your arm 24 7 because you didn't clean it up properly and it actually will affect your gameplay as you get uncomfortable and annoyed. So please for the love of god, keep that thing clean. Also, a good mouse pad has to fit your sense. Sensitivity. The bigger the mouse pad, the slower your sensitivity can be. And that is what you want when you're starting out, as it makes you way more accurate. I had an XL mouse pad before and I noticed that I wasn't comfortable on it with my sensitivity. Why you're asking? I had a low sensitivity and while aiming on it was fine, building was a struggle, as I had to move my mouse around a lot more due to it. That is when I got an XXL mouse pad and I would recommend it to everyone. It did not only give me way more space, it also provided a really nice smooth surface for my arm to glide on while using my mouse and it elevated my gameplay to a higher level for sure. No matter if I'm wearing long sleeves or short sleeves, my arm will always glide smoothly over my mouse pad and it actually made me improve so much more and get more comfortable with keyboard and mouse in general. Now some of you don't have this space for a large mouse pad, which means your sensitivity is probably higher as well due to the limited space you have. You might be a so-called wrist gamer, someone that uses their wrist instead of their whole arm with a mouse. Now people can get incredibly good by using their wrist and there's nothing wrong with it, but you should really aim for moving the mouse with your whole arm as this gives you more precision in game. So what can you do to free up more space on your desk to become an arm gamer apart from buying a bigger desk? Let me tell you that in the next segment. Keyboard tilting. 
that is the solution. Yes, we've arrived at the keyboard segment on the road to getting more comfortable with keyboard and mouse. Now when you're rocking a small desk with little to no space for big mouse movements and you literally have zero dollars for a desk upgrade, then it might be beneficial for you to tilt your keyboard. I personally tilt my keyboard slightly as it gives me even more space to move my mouse around and it feels better for my left wrist when pressing buttons on the keyboard. However, when you are in desperate need for a lot more space, then you should try to tilt your keyboard completely vertical. Someone you might know that uses it is Tfue and he explains why in the clip I'm about to show you. Why not the keyboard sideways? Because a horizontal uh, keyboard takes up too much space on small LAN desks. That's my main reason, dude. So like I can play like this. I, mean, I have this much room. Uh, I'm talking like this, dude. But you gotta, you gotta keep in mind that my, my keyboard's small too. Now I personally can't use it as it literally feels like I'm breaking my wrist that way, but you should try it out and see if you can get used to it, as it could be extremely beneficial for lowering your sense and getting more space overall. Now to save even more space, you should also buy a 60% mechanical keyboard. This means 40% of your keyboard is just gone, while all the essential keys for playing the game remain. It made playing so much more comfortable for me and I don't think I ever could go back to a regular keyboard. Two great 60% keyboards you could pick up are the Ducky 1 2 Mini and the N Pro 2. They are both extremely popular so it could take some time to get in but I would say it is 100% worth it. Now that you have a good foundation you need to also start off right on the keyboard. When placing your fingers on the keyboard rest your middle finger on W, index finger on D, ring finger on A, thumb on spacebar and pinky on shift. W, A, S, D are your movement keys and thus the most important. This is the proper way to play on the keyboard and practice with these keys until you get comfortable with it. I know there are videos out there of people using different movement keybinds but these people have mastered it and can't easily transfer over to WASD anymore. And while it frees up more keybinds to press, it is just easier to learn the default layout from the start. You will always have enough keybinds close to your movement keys to use, especially if your mouse has two buttons. Besides the movement keys, the rest of the keybinds are up to you to change to your preference. Just make sure they are both competitive and easy to use for you. You don't want to feel extremely uncomfortable, but you also need to understand that learning takes time and that pressing some keys will feel uncomfortable. Also, when deciding on your keybinds, think to yourself if you use your thumb or not when pressing keys. This all comes down to how you were taught to type back in the day, as some people use their thumb for Z, X, Z and V, while others use their index finger. Pressing these buttons with your thumb is arguably faster and you should consider if you want to learn using your thumb for these keys, but pressing them with your index finger is also fine. Whatever is most comfortable for you. I personally use my index finger to press C and Z, X and V are unbinded for me as they are not comfortable for me to press as I am not someone that uses my thumb for these keys. There are plenty of other keybinds to replace them. Don't worry. Start with these basics, practice a lot and over time it will feel natural and the discomfort in your fingers will stop. Oh right. And as far as the mouse goes, make sure it has two side buttons and decide if you want it wireless or not and you're pretty much good to go. It is all personal preference. You have things like the weight of a mouse and hypergliders but I just wanted a wireless mouse and the G Pro Wireless has worked wonders for me. Now I hope you found this video helpful. I put a lot of time, knowledge and effort into it. If you did enjoy it then please leave a like on it and consider subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. And now go click on the link in the description and hang out with me live. If not, then I will see you all in the next video.